The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Week 8 of college football is all wrapped up. It's in the books. A lot of excitement went on between teams that were struggling against teams that they shouldn't have been and teams performing the way that we exactly how we expected them to. There was all kinds of stuff and there was even some big upsets. We're going to talk about all of this and we're also going to get into our top 10 college football rankings. We're going to talk about all of this and so much more today on Rising to the Occasion. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. I got to say, welcome to the new studio. Still a little bit of lighting issues that we're going to get resolved and everything, but it's it's nice. It's new. Uh, we're excited to have it here. Uh, but Jeremy, I guess to you, welcome to the new studio. Dude, this is like a night and day difference compared to when we first started to do it. And now getting everything, it's every little piece of the puzzle is just starting to come more realistic. And just even having something like this, this is really fun to do. So I can't, I'm excited for we have a lot, obviously, a lot more plans coming down the road, but we can't give everything away. So you guys just gotta stay tuned. So, Josh, what do we have on the agenda today? We've got all kinds of college football recapping to do. Uh, we wanted to be able to figure out a way for us to do this recap in its own episode earlier in the week uh, and more immediately right after college football. It just doesn't work for any of our schedules to collaborate. Uh, it didn't even work for Blake today. Uh, prayers up to him. He's going uh, through some questions right now. And uh, so hopefully uh, his little boy's a little sick right now too. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll, we'll hope that, that uh, hope that everything goes well there. Prayers, uh, so prayers up for that. But uh, you know, just, just looking at, at college football, it's so hard to cover all that happened in college football weekend and then jump on top of that and try to get to the NFL. So we're going to try to get to the NFL at a later time tonight because we've got a lot to talk about when it comes to college football this season, uh, or I guess this weekend. And so looking at week eight, it was just full of kind of surprises, I guess you would say, maybe some shockers. Um, But I guess before we get into it, let's first mention something that I know you guys, if you're watching this show, you probably care a little bit about, and that's sports betting. Because sports betting is something that makes it a lot lot more fun for people, you know, for fans to get into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Last night I went on, and one of my favorite uh, sports books now is FanDuel. I've been going on to FanDuel and uh, placing wagers. I found one. It was tight ends day yesterday. Yeah. So I said, you know what, I'm going to put in a little tight ends bet. I saw that they had a boost for it in FanDuel. So I said, all right, let's 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 just pick three. I don't want to pick four or five because I know the fourth or fifth isn't going to hit. But I'm going to pick three tight ends. They're going to have a happy tight ends day, and they're going to score a touchdown. Travis Kelsey is very easy to pick. I'm going to throw him on that. On that. Uh, Mark Andrews, another easier one to pick, but who knows? It's nebulos, as Michael Scott would say. So, uh, you know, just looking at that, I figured Mark Andrews is one of the one of the top, maybe the top three, if not top two, tight ends in the league right now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Andrews, uh, and then I ended up picking Dallas Goddard. Uh, that was the third one. I was a little bit more nervous about that one because he hasn't been the biggest target, target. for Jalen Hurts. Yeah. But I went on there, won a little bit of cheddar on that that parlay. Uh, and, and it just makes it fun because you place a reasonable and responsible wager on a game. And, uh, you know, that that's that's what we do. We might bet 25 bucks on a game, yeah. something like that. And, yeah. you know, if, if we do go more than that, it's only because it's with house money, uh, stuff like that. So it's not like we're throwing out our bank savings, being smart about it. But one thing that's really difficult, like I mentioned, FanDuel, what's difficult is maybe FanDuel is not the best sports book for you. Maybe it's not available to you. Maybe it doesn't have the best offers and that's really difficult for someone first starting off and learning how to get into sports book uh, sports betting and uh, you know where do i start which book do i use i get that question a lot which sports book should i use and i'll give people the recommendations as far as what works for me but different sports books work different for people and some of them are easier for other people to navigate Mm -hmm. what you can do is you can go to that link down at the bottom of the screen also down in the description and you can go to rising2.com slash bet that is r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o dot com slash b-e-t you go there and we've compiled all of the best sports books in your region so if you select your state or wherever you live then it will give you whatever's available to you so that makes that very easy takes one part of the equation out of it for you and it also ranks them based on general consensus of of how people feel about 
the sports books they're using and it might even give some reviews on there as well but on top of that so there's two things it takes out maybe what other people are feeling and and what's available to you but it also gives you the most exclusive offers uh so i know FanDuel had had something like you bet five dollars and get two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly mm-hmm. so stuff like that is out there so if you go to rising2.com slash bet it will give you all of the best sports books you can find the sports book that is available and best for you depending on where you're at and what you're looking for you can shop around and look at the different ones and if you click on those links in that that website rising2.com slash bet it will automatically give you those most exclusive offers that all of the top sports books will offer you. And if you're in a state that doesn't have sports betting uh, through sports books, there's also different fantasy sites that are available to you. So I know over just across the border from us in Nebraska, there's some fantasy sites uh, like uh, I think it's Underdogs. Underdogs yeah. yeah, and so a few other ones like that. A lot of fun. And and like I said, we, we plead that you would bet responsibly, um, but go on there and just have a little bit of fun with it. That's all we do here, and that's what we're encouraging you as well. Mm-hmm. But Jeremy, let's go ahead and get into it because, like I said, there is a lot of college football to recap yes. and to go over. Uh, man, there was there was a lot too. And, and looking at it, we we got done. So we were over at the game, obviously, and and we went to the Oklahoma game there in Norman. And whenever we got out of there, we were looking up some of the stats, some of the scores, the things that were going on. There was a lot of shockers, um, and and so to look through all that went on this past weekend, man, it was it was a hectic weekend. Absolutely. I mean, the biggest one that threw me for a curve, like, take it for granted, they came back and won, was the Washington-Arizona State game. We were all sitting around the fire back in in Tulsa, and we were talking about scores throughout the game, I mean, throughout the day, and then I pulled it up. I'm like, am I reading this right? I'm like, Josh, we need to go inside. And and you looked at me like, what are you talking about? I'm like, Arizona State, one in five Arizona State at the time was beating Washington with Michael Penix Jr. Like, whatever, be quiet. You're you're probably bluffing. Them. I pull up the score and I show you. I'm like, okay, we all literally got <laughs> up like this and flipped on the channel, and we we couldn't believe that Washington was losing to Arizona State. Props to Arizona State. You guys played an unbelievable game against a really really good Washington team. But like, yeah, obviously the. The final outcome of the game wasn't how Arizona State wanted it to, but still, I got to give so much credit to Arizona State for putting in Washington, too. That was another thing. They were on the road in Washington. So my hat's off to Arizona State for putting up a heck of a fight. Then even just throughout the other games, like we were talking about the Ohio and Penn State game, and that we all knew that was going to be a shootout. Yeah. But like, well, I mean, let's start off with Washington game because you yeah. went there. So let's let's start off with that one. We got yeah. Washington, number five in the nation uh, mm-hmm. currently. They were they were, I think they were in our top fives, top yeah. sixes at the very least. Yeah. Some of us, I think, would put them in the top four if I remember right. Yeah. Uh, so you just looking at Washington, they they are they're that they're that top team. And so whenever you said that they were they were losing seven to three, and I was like, oh, first quarter, second quarter, something like that. Yeah. No, midway through the third quarter, what the heck is going on? Because we're just having, trying to have a good time around the fire yeah. and just relax after you know a long day. Yeah. And uh, you know, so that that was just a shock. So of course we heard him dart straight inside. It's like <laughs> yeah. man, Pac twelve after dark, and what do we usually see with Pac twelve after dark? Score. Scores. Score. 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 score score and it just keeps on going we see lots of high scoring games but that wasn't the case that wasn't oh. the case at all with this one uh washington ends up pulling it out and really because of a 90 yard pick six ends up securing the game winning mm-hmm. it 15 to 7 uh and and one thing that arizona state did because you talk about, about michael Penix jr that is the dude that gets this offense rolling and washington's defense Nothing, nothing to be ashamed of. No, nothing to be ashamed of because you you literally won this game mm-hmm. uh, in in every aspect of the game. They they were they were being physical. Arizona State was being physical. Mm-hmm. We saw so many times uh, that you know they were they were being extremely physical and and just putting that that shoulder down and fighting for extra yards so many times. Unbelievable. Um, but then what they did to Michael Penix Jr. is something that I don't think anybody else has been able to do. And that's getting him to turn over the ball. Two interceptions on the day. Mm -hmm. Just not a great day for him. But it just, it was honestly just who is the more physical team? And this is the, a, a, an outlier of a physical team yeah. not winning the game. Yeah. The, the more physical team did not did win not the game. Win game. Washington was physical too. Oh, yeah. Don't get me but wrong. But they, they weren't were. as physical as Arizona no. State. And Arizona State wanted it. Dude, Arizona State was, they were like a rabid dog trying to find dinner. 
with how tough they were playing. Like you said, their running backs, we were watching them. Like, you'd see them get pushed back for right around the line of scrimmage. All of a sudden, they find a way to get those extra four or five yards. And we're just looking at each other like, is he seriously doing this against the Washington defense? Like, we were we were honestly mind-boggled at so many times just because we saw them do the exact same plays, like, two or three times in a row, and they would do the exact same outcome and just make it work and just find the ways to get first downs, and then they would just – they would just unfortunately get to the point where they had to punt it. But still, Arizona State, like I said, my props are off to you guys. You guys put up a heck of a game. And Michael Penix Jr., I don't know what the heck was going on. Like you said, every quarterback doesn't have a perfect game, game every day. Like, if you're going to have, if you're going to say a quarterback's going to have a perfect game every week, I'm going to call you fat out a lie right in front of your face. And literally, Arizona State, from what I remember, because it was a late night game, obviously, pack after dark, then the big thing that hurt, like you said, that 94-yard interception, then we saw it, then we both said, don't throw it. And then at the same time, he cut in front of him, then ran it back for the end zone. But, I mean, also I do want to give a props to Arizona State again. They're, they were on their third-string quarterback for this kind of a situation. Third-string junior. Um, I originally think he is from Arizona, but I could be wrong. But – for being a third string, he was honestly playing like a first string, like you would you would recommend seeing any of these quarterbacks do, whether you're the first string or the third string. You well, got he play. had he had nothing to lose. Yeah, exactly. Go out he had there nothing and just to prove lose. Something. Then he, also another and thing, like how many times did they go on for fourth for, on fourth down? Yeah, and they made a convert almost every time. From yeah, what we yeah, saw. yeah. They played a very very good game, and like yeah. I said, I just think it was very physical. Yeah. Um, but let's jump over to the Oklahoma game. Uh, you and I were in attendance. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, first. I mean, really, first two quarters, and even like until right after halftime, the stadium was just dead. Yeah, you didn't feel the energy in the stadium from the fans. You didn't feel it from the field, yeah. uh, from the players and what they were doing. Uh, you know, and that there was just crucial penalties and, and crucial moments. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm an Oklahoma fan, so I'll be biased and throw this out there, and I'll say, is it for the fact that? This is Oklahoma's last year in the Big 12 uh, because there was also another penalty later on. So uh, th- this is something else. So anyways, uh, let's recap this and then I'll talk a little bit more about the penalties. But, yeah. uh, you know, first off, we didn't feel like anyone really had a spectacular day. But whenever you think about it, Nick Anderson, mm. two touchdowns on the day. He had the first one. So he had the, the game winning touchdown against Texas yeah. uh, in the last game that they were in. And now he has the first, the game opening touchdown, yeah. and another big one later on. So uh, two two touchdowns for him. He was over 105 yards. How many receptions do you think he had? Oh. He had 105 yards. Twelve. Five inter- five receptions for 105 yards. Wow. So you know, and and one criticism. So really, the only criticism that I have of Oklahoma in this game because you held UCF to 29 points and they had some big breakout plays, mm-hmm. some very big breakout plays. Yeah. And it was just broken coverage, broken uh, broken Third assignments. Yeah. yeah, and and so and you know, one of the touchdowns came after a questionable uh, a questionable penalty That's called. It was a personal foul that gave them the first first down again on the fourth uh, on the uh, first down after a, a third down stop yeah. from the from the one yard line. So yeah. th- it was three consecutive stops uh, on the one yard line, and then they call a penalty. So that was questionable. But anyways. The, the defense didn't play bad. No. Uh, the second quarter really beat the defense up, lo- allowing 17 points in that second quarter yeah, that for Oklahoma. That hurt. But it wasn't a bad game overall. Uh, and when you really break it down and look at it, and a lot of people that just look at stats, you're going to look at Dylan Gabriel. Uh, I mean, 25-38, not that bad. Not bad no, at all. Not bad. Uh, and he threw for 253 yards. Not bad at all. Not Three bad. touchdowns, but people are going to pick on that interception. Mm. What happened on the interception? It wasn't even his fault. Dur- this, is the, this is the kind of stat that irritates – the All living daylights out of me. I mm. think, yeah, most most football fans. Yeah, uh, that you know, bouncing off a receiver's hands and, and in this case, right in Drake Stoops' chest. Yeah, uh, and so just the way that he went up for the ball, um, there was just a lot of dropped passes like that, and there was uh, you know another interception later on that was really a good throw, just big pass interference. Yeah, uh, the defender was able to get gain his ground and, and get in front of the ball because of it. Yeah, but overall, whenever I went back to watch this game, I wasn't I wasn't looking at Oklahoma the same way as the stressful, stressful. the stressful situation that we were yeah. in, in the stadium. Yeah. Uh, and so that's one thing I think Oklahoma, it, it looked like one of those games, like what we saw Georgia. Uh, what, I think it was even last year against you, uh, you know, sorry, it was, it was against Kent, Kent state, state. Yeah. and, and where they struggle against Kent state or it comes down to the wire against Missouri. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and we've seen teams like Auburn back in 2010, they won it against Kentucky by a field goal. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, we see, 
teams like Alabama just barely squeezed by uh, a small team that they should be running all over. So that's kind of what this looked like to me. Yeah. And it didn't, it, it, when you go back and look at the game, it doesn't concern me for where Oklahoma stands. Yeah, that's true. I mean, for the overall atmosphere, first, before we get into this, the, that was my first time ever to Norman. Mm-hmm. Then that place just flat out, the Coliseum was just unbelievable. Then I'm not gonna lie, I may or may not have crapped my pants or almost have. I'm not gonna not gonna say when they the fly over that that scared the living daylight out of me. <laughs> um because look, I'm because we were on the end zone side and I'm like, why is everyone looking up? Because we saw the plane flying the banner behind. I'm thinking, I'm just staring at that, and all of a sudden <sighs> I'm like <laughs> okay, nope, I need to go check my pants. Um <laughs> no, but the overall atmosphere that was fun. Just but the big thing, like you said. I asked you a couple times, even like, is this the normal Norman, Oklahoma hype? No, Just because, like, yeah, and that's that's one thing that was so frustrating as a fan. Uh, I'm I'm the kind of guy that I try to pick seats that I feel like are going to have energetic fans. I try mm-hmm. to get down low as as low as I can without getting too low, where I can see the field very well. Yeah, and I want to find a section that's going to have guys that are going to stand up. Sorry, guys and guys and girls, guys and girls. that are going to stand up and get rowdy and and get loud because I don't want to be the only guy and have to have people tap me on my shoulder and tell me to sit down. The energy just wasn't there until you finally saw what Norman feels like <laughs> when your team is is in a close, in a close matchup yeah. and and you, you get up because that's usually first quarter in these kinds of games. Yeah. You blow them out in the first half and the second half is just mellow and just maybe hollering here and there on a fourth down, yeah. but not too much after that because you're pretty relaxed and you're yeah. good to go. Yeah, like the big thing that, in my opinion, that got the Oklahoma crowd going was the big four fourth down stand in the end zone then obviously like you mentioned the having that penalty to come back then we got to redo it all over again but i mean yeah. still the oklahoma fan base that was unbelievable but that was electric to say the least like my ears are still low-key ringing after <laughs> that game in mock line we've been there since saturday so yeah a lot of fun and i'll be back, back down there in three weeks yeah. uh so I'm, too? I'm, I'm against west virginia and Ooh. i may be regretting that decision because all that driving, chilly. and then I'm gonna have to come right back up and straight out to Des Moines, right yeah. out, and all of that week. Oh man, uh, much like I did uh, this man, past oh, weekend. Man. But yeah, overall, I mean, Oklahoma squeezes out one, but they're not the only team to have squeezed one out over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, so Oklahoma ends up winning that by a failed two point conversion. Uh, they end up winning thirty one to twenty nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we look over at Texas. We talked about Texas a little bit too, and looking over at Texas, and you know, I brought them up just because they're in the, uh, the same boat as Oklahoma. One thing mm-hmm. that a lot of people are overlooking with Oklahoma yeah. is that they just came off of a bye week. What do teams do at, off a of bye week? They're it's rusty. They're the slow sluggish. to they're slow to get out. And it was an eleven AM game, yeah. uh, which you know I just don't like anyways because a lot sleepies in the rest. Yeah. So I mean they're just like I said, there wasn't any energy in the stadium. Mm-hmm. Um Quinn Ewers um, looks like for Texas it looks like he might be out for four to six weeks, I think I saw. Mm. Uh so just hopefully mm-hmm. he has a speedy recovery and maybe he can beat that. Yeah. Um but yeah, that's that's not good. That's not something you, you want to see no. from any guy. And from being the team that I hope Oklahoma sees again, I mean, I guess maybe I don't hope that they see them again, but the team well, I yeah. expect Oklahoma to see again in the, the Big 12 championship game, I hope he's at full strength because I don't want Oklahoma to go in there and win the Big 12 only because Quinn Ewers was out yeah. and a bunch of baloney uh, and come flying from the, the fans. Yeah. Um, but. You know, Quinn Ewers still had a day, uh, looked really good, but they end up coming out with this this game, and they only end up winning thirty one to twenty four against Houston, just barely squeezing out with a touchdown there, uh, kind of late. And so, just looking at, at at Texas, like I said, they're in a very similar boat, a bye week coming into mm-hmm. uh, into you know your next game. next game, and on top of that, uh, you just lost a game where you got beat up, and and for Oklahoma, uh, on the other hand, you were you were getting beat up in, in the same same game. Uh, yeah. So looking at that overall, I felt like these two teams came out very similar mm-hmm. in in terms of energy, what was out, out in front of them. Uh, but ultimately, that's that's when games like this, a lot of times you're going to look back on because I think one of these two teams between Oklahoma and Texas, and we just talked about Washington barely squeezing one off. Yeah. Uh, so these are three top top ranked teams, uh, and we'll get to our rankings here in a little bit to see where we still rank these these teams because they were all three in the top ten. Mm-hmm. Um, but these are three ranked teams that you you look at them and yes they lost. And they are sorry they they won, they won barely, um, but they 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 didn't play the best that they could have. But a lot of times in those games, that's a that's a, a win is all you need. Just crawl out alive mm-hmm. and go on because we've seen Georgias, we've seen Alabamas, we've seen uh, teams like mm-hmm. 2019 LSU, and I know I'm saying a lot of SEC teams, but uh, look at Ohio State. 
Yeah. They've they've had years where they lose to a team they shouldn't shouldn't and still get into the big talks and win yeah. the Big Ten and all this and have a chance for the national championship. So what I'm saying is I think you're going to have games like this. Yeah, uh, and and you're going to get your head a little too high and not realize where it should be. Uh, and so coming out with the victory and fighting adversity through all the penalties and the emotions that were going into the uh, these games. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so looking at Texas coming out with this 31 to 24, uh, a pretty good win when you when you just consider you're 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 walking out with the victory even fighting back from adversity and losing your starting quarterback too. Yeah, absolutely. It's one thing to to win the game, but having Quentin Ewers go out, that's the biggest thing. Like a lot of people after after seeing Quentin Ewers' injury, they thought that it was just going to be a complete nine day difference and it was just going to go downhill from there. I mean, but I mean still props to Texas and pulling out the win against a good Houston team. Like Houston's one of those teams that where they can really surprise you. And we've seen time after time to where we've talked about so many different teams outside of Houston like there's so many we can probably list off, but overall, at the end of the day, I mean, a win's a win, and the bi- that's the big thing. Every week, the way I see it, every single week, I don't care what the whole schedule looks like. You just look in this week, one and zero. If you pull out the win, okay, perfect. Scratch that. Same situation. Just think one and zero. I don't care. That's the one thing that's always got my biggest pet peeve. You look at the schedules like early in the season to like before the season even starts, and people are thinking, oh, they're going to be a four and five team, or they're going to be a six and four team, or whatever. Well, and even looking at what TCU did last year, what did they do? They squeezed out wins and they got to a position where they could have put themselves in a good position. They won a playoff game. Yeah. Uh, You know, we won't talk about what they did in the national championship game. (laughs) But, you know, and and I think that was just a lot of uh, lack of preparation in a lot of areas. And and they just didn't try to set a game plan for for going against Georgia. But what are you going to do against Georgia? Yeah, and and that's another thing, too, is you're just outmatched. Mm -hmm. You're you're, you're outsmarted, uh, pun intended. Um, But, yeah, looking at at Texas, too, their defense, did you see how many rushing yards they allowed? No. And this is what I think stands out with with Texas. They only allowed 14 rushing yards on on the entire day. Wow! And so I think that's what stands out with with Texas. And I still do think Texas, even without Quinn Ewers, uh, and I'm not sure what they're going to end up doing uh, as far as who they're going to actually end up putting into the game to take over for him. Yeah. Um, because we did see Malik Murphy. Uh, he's he's the one that came in, but. When when you look at what you have, do you go with Arch Manning and let him season up, or do you think let's just go with the guy that has a little more uh, experience and and figure out a way to work something out with him to try to just make sure we we win and we don't have rookie mistakes? My thing is it it depends who are they playing is my question. Well, they, yeah, and and, and this like, is something too that I haven't really looked into it. I don't know if if. Uh, if Steve Sarkeesian has already said something along these lines right. of what he plans on doing with his quarterback situation. Yeah. Uh, so take that, you know, with a grain of salt as well. But yeah. uh, overall, I mean, cause if you're Texas, I got the schedule pulled up right here. You've got next week, you got BYU, not an easy game. That's, that's another Houston. That's yes. going to give you fits. Yeah. Uh, and, and they've been known to pull off those big games against big time opponents, Kansas state. Again, not another, it's not a walk in the it's park. Walk, yeah. Um, and then you go at TCU. That's an that's in-state a, rivalry. That's tough. Uh, and then you got uh, at Iowa state, uh, that's that tough. one, that one can be tough, but I think you've got that one pretty secured. Yeah. And then versus Texas tech, which right now it just doesn't look like Texas tech is on their a game no. and they're not nearly as good as a lot of us expected them to be, uh, me included. But, Texas Tech going against Texas Tech as Texas again another in-state rivalry that yeah. you're going to be butting heads with. Yeah. So uh, it's I don't know the uh, way the way I see it. I want to see them give Archie Manning a shot, but obviously if you don't think he's up to that full capability, then obviously bring in the original second string. But I mean, do we think that's probably going to happen? No. Like I'm just like I said, guys. I'm just. I'm just free ball guessing here. Do I think that's going to probably happen? No. But would I like to see Archie get some time just to see what he can potentially do later down the season and then maybe, maybe go from there? I mean, at the same time, with this with this other guy, what was his name again? For Malik Murphy. Murphy. Yeah, Malik yeah. Murphy. I mean, he's had some reps, but nothing compared to, obviously, Quint Ewers. But I, I sincerely think... Give him a shot. When we're looking at at Quinn Ewers not coming back until that Texas, that Texas Tech, Tech game, game, or possibly if it if it doesn't go as well as they would hope, possibly not coming back until the Big Twelve Championship game, mm. if that. Yeah. So I mean, whoever it is, you want them to not only win today, like you were saying, we're we're one and zero. 
uh, today, tomorrow, yeah. it goes back to O and O. Exactly. We're, we're fighting for we're another, fighting for, fighting for one and O. So, uh, you know, so, I mean, you can do that each week with whoever you put back there. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, for the long term goal, it needs to be a situation where, great, we walked out one and O, mm -hmm. and he learned from some mistakes in a win. Yeah, exactly. And he can build on that to build up to that Big 12 championship game if you don't have Quinn Ewers. Exactly. So that's the thing that concerns me with Texas. Uh, and, and man, I don't I don't think it's as big as a deal as a lot of people are making it out to be because I mm -hmm. think between Malik Murphy and Qu uh, uh, Archie, Manning, Archie Manning, I think looking at those two guys, I think they can they can figure something out, and I still think they can be dangerous. Yeah, definitely. They can they can still be dangerous, to say the least. I mean, you got plenty of weapons, to say the least. So I mean, talking about, a, a, you know, talking about this reminds me of a team uh, back in, I think it was 2014, that had to go to their third-string quarterback and ended up winning a national championship, that? and that's Ohio State. Mm. Uh, and going over to Ohio State, let's just jump over to it because yeah. they had a, another great game. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready to say right now that I think Ohio State might be – the best looking team currently. I'm not saying they're the best team, but I do think they're the best team, uh, best looking team right now because you look at their resume and what they've done and consistently winning against Notre Dame uh, and, and pulling off against the other teams that they've beaten and now against uh, Penn State uh, and, and just the way that they keep on pulling off these wins mm -hmm. uh, and what we saw them do, do to Maryland, just pull out, pull yeah. something, a trick out of the hat, like just yeah. like that. Yeah. So I just looking at Penn State, uh, I think they were a good team. But the question that everybody had for them was their defense is looking solid. And they, I think they, they stood up. I think they made a lot of good adjustments and slowed Ohio State down Definitely. to only scoring 20 points. That's big against a team like Ohio State. But when your biggest running back didn't even get 50 yards on the day, yeah. you're having issues. Definitely. And that's where Ohio State just looks like they look like the best team in the nation right now to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just I don't know. I'm looking. I know Michigan had a really good game against Michigan State. Uh, that well, look at that was schedule. very that was very surprising. Yeah, and, and that's something to bring up. Uh, they they haven't played anybody, but they've also been beating and handling everybody that they've played. Mm -hmm. I think they've covered covered the spread uh, in most of their games. They may have not covered the spread in one of them. Five out of six. Uh, yeah, and so I mean, just looking at what they've done, they played really well against Nebraska, uh, and and then now coming in, you know, to Michigan State, which it's it's still a rivalry. There's still mm -hmm. some weird things that are going to happen, and you just blew them out of the water yeah but but ohio state battling through adversity to win the games against notre dame and now penn state that says enough to me to where i really like what penn state's got here or what oh sorry state. ohio state's got here and i still think penn state looks good i still think penn state has a chance that if they went out and the cards play right now it's not in your hands that's the only problem yeah as you need a loss from michigan and ohio state now mm -hmm. uh and and so maybe even two from ohio state depending on how it all played out yeah but uh, just looking at Ohio State right now, I think they look like a very complete team. The 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 offense could could use some improvements. Yes, but what's the one dude that we talk about on offense that he stands up and makes plays and he made some really big plays some guy uh, on like, Saturday. Some guy like I think it's like Marvin Harrison Jr. or something. One hundred and sixty two yards and a tutty on the day. Uh, just the dude. The, if Marvin Harrison Jr. is very good. Dog. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And Kyle McCord didn't look great, but he went out there and did his job. He didn't turn the ball over. Yeah. And I think that's all you expect from this offense when the defense is looking this good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, like, you get these teams, you can have unbelievable stats or you can have absolute trash of stats. But at the end of the day, if you're still pulling off dubs, that's the big thing. Like, we can, I shouldn't say we can care less because a lot of people are going to look at stats. But at the same time, unless you actually see the game physically, if you're at the stadium or not, and if you're going to be a critic, like you obviously said, a big thing is what these guys look at for completion ratios and interceptions to turnover ratios. So that's the biggest thing for all this kind of situation. It still drives me nuts as much as it drives you nuts. But at the same time, like if you're going to come into the game and if you have, like I said, phenomenal stats, you throw 38 for 42 or whatever, or if you throw 16 for 35, at the end of the day, if you still come out with a win, congratulations to you. Awesome. I love seeing you put, put a dub on the board. But, however, a big thing, like I said, go back throughout the rest of the week. Watch plenty of film. Just learn from your simple mistakes. Or even if you even if you know those times where you throw a pass and you're like, I shouldn't have thrown that or whatever the situation is. Just go out and learn from it and just keep being you and just get, stick to your game plan is my big thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and you hear that from all of the greats, too, is that it's, it's the best to be able to go back and mm – -hmm learn what you can fix mm -hmm. from a win. Yep. When you can look at a win and feel like you lost, 
That's a great thing. thing. That is the best thing you can yeah. have. Figure out what you can do and do right. Yeah. Uh, for Penn State, on the other hand, you've got to be able to complete and compete on third down. Yes. Uh, you've got to be able to. You did good on defense. I think Penn State's defense played an all right game. Mm-hmm. I really do. I think they just had their hands full with Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, and couldn't stop that. That's mainly what got Ohio State in the end zone and got them uh, really rolling. It felt yeah. like it felt like whenever there was whenever there was something that needed to be done to give them the first down, to give them one extra inch, one extra yard, yeah. it was Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, and him stepping up. But uh, Penn State on offense, one for 16 on the day on third downs. Wow. So you had 16 times that you could have converted keep the ball in your possession waste more time and possibly even work your way down to get points on the board whether it be a field goal or a touchdown something and you weren't able to do it Uh, so looking at that i think that's that's a big thing uh and i mean penn state also they were they were clean on the day too there wasn't any turnovers yeah Uh, i think there was one turnover uh from ohio state i think that was the only turnover all game yeah Uh, and so looking at that just one one fumble so uh, just overall, a really fun game, uh, and and I wish we would have been able to watch this one a little closer. Um, yeah. But of course, we were, we were in a stadium ourselves, trying to trying to see what was going to happen there. Yeah. So yeah, just a, a really fun game, uh, and and like I said, I think both of these teams looked outstanding. I think both of them deserved some attention from how good they looked, but at the same time, I think looking at the winner of this game. I think Ohio State, when I compare them, Ohio State and Michigan, and this is just off of the intangibles, the things you can't necessarily see on the field, it's just the heart, the grit, the, mm-hmm. the hard work that's being put into it. Uh, that's where I really feel like Ohio State right now feels like the favorite. Earlier in the season, I, I said it. Yeah. I feel like Michigan's the, the team that's going to, that's the team to beat. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the team that's going to come out here and, and, and win this thing. But yeah. I'm not seeing that from Michigan as much, yeah. even though they just now had an amazing game, and I don't want to take anything from Michigan. You'll well, see where I put them in my standings um, because I, I think that says enough about Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um, but a, a really fun game. But let's jump down to Duke, Florida State, another game. We've been talking about Duke all season long. They beat Clemson. Uh, they, they put up a really good fight against Notre Dame, uh, and, and they've been handling business outside of those two games. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, And so looking at Duke and what they've done, uh, sitting there, only two losses on the season now, uh, and Riley Leonard just still not looking healthy, no. and that's that's a big part of it, uh, and and that sucks. But you were fighting, you you were in it until the the, the fourth quarter, mm-hmm. and you just let Florida State pull away with this thing and just run all over you in the in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Uh, Florida State ends up hanging up twenty one p- uh, points in the fourth quarter alone, uh, and Jordan Travis looking really good, twenty seven to thirty six. He ended up putting up two hundred and uh, over two hundred fifty yards, mm-hmm. uh, and even had himself a, a couple of touchdowns on the day yeah. too. So he looked really good. It just looked like this whole offense was in click enough to be able to pull out in that fourth quarter and fighting through ad- adversity too, mm-hmm. uh, because I think I, I think just looking at that and. Uh, I'm trying to think to uh, Rodney Hill. Yeah, Rodney Hill. Uh, they're running back for Florida Florida okay. State. Yeah. Uh, he looked really good. I think he was the one that ended up kind of sealing the deal with a big time touchdown mm-hmm. uh, towards the end to really push it over the top yeah. too. So uh, ultimately, Florida State, another team. And whenever you look at these top, really the top five teams, um, it, it just it looks like it's a really close race, and Florida State's right up there with them. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look at. Do you look at Florida State? They're definitely one of these teams to where you know they're always going to be in the back of your mind that they're always that tough, and they know that they're going to put up a fight every single game, night in and night out. But, I mean, like you said, Jordan Travis having a heck of a game and just putting up great stats and good numbers. But, I mean, outside of that, like – just the determination that he puts in every single game is a big thing just because, you know, like once you get in a slump, it's just so hard to get out of that slump. But like for for his situation, he never looks on the negative side. He looks at that and just feeds off of it. And that's always a big, crucial thing for a person. Like I said, you never want to get in that kind of a situation of a slump. I've been in that and I've gotten out of it, thankfully. But it it, it stays with you, really. And I know you've probably you played football as well, Josh, and you always got in those slumps. But at the same time, a thing that always gets to me, you always got to play all four quarters like you used to at the beginning of the game. You can't just... You can't just let off the gas pedal going into the fourth quarter and just hope that you can scrape by with a win compared to who Florida State played. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. Talking about Duke even a little bit, we're no, obviously a lot of people know Duke for being a basketball school. But you look at this kind of a situation. What's their record now? Six and two? Five, five, and, and, five, five and two. And, five and two, excuse me. Yep. But, I mean, for these guys, they're definitely being – the dog's definitely barking out of all these guys. And – 
you look at this kind of a situation, and they want to be known for something other than just basketball. Yeah, and, and, and Duke is, they are that team that's just more physical because they're they're not as big. They're not as talented, yeah. but they play like it. Mm-hmm. And if you watch them play, they are. They're playing like it. And that's that's the amazing thing about Duke right now to me exactly. is just seeing how they play because that's what's keeping them in these kinds of games against exactly. a, a top four team in Florida State. Uh, so, I mean, it's 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 looking really fun in college football the more that you Absolutely. look at it. Um, let's go over to over to another Pac-12 matchup, and that was between Oregon and Washington State. Mm-hmm. A really fun one. Uh, Bo Nix doing his thing. Uh, he ended you know? up putting up 293 yards and two touchdowns on the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you able to lean on Bucky Irving having 129 yards and two rushing touchdowns on mm-hmm. the day. Uh, so an outstanding performance on only 15 carries, too. So it's not like he ran the ball 25 times. Yeah. So I'm just looking at, at their offense, their offense was clicking. But the thing that surprised me a little bit with this was the – Lack of physicality from Oregon's defense. I felt like they were just, even though the score doesn't really show it, because 24 points isn't that bad for defense, uh, they let up over 400 passing yards. Wow. Uh, So like it was like some 430-some passing yards. Uh, And so looking at this defense, I mean, it just looked like they weren't, they weren't clicking. fast or physical, and, and yeah, they weren't clicking together the way that, that you would expect them to. But for them to come out after that tough, heartbreaking loss, mm-hmm. and, and everyone blames that on the fourth down conversions and, and not being able to complete uh, those fourth down conversions. So knowing that it was that close, mm-hmm. that there was literally three plays that you can take back and say, field goal, field goal, and don't, don't, don't give it to them in your own territory, yeah. and you win the game. The fact that you can rely on those three plays and and say that it was that close is very heartbreaking. Yeah. And so uh, just looking at Oregon, being able to fight back after a tough loss, that's the, that's the biggest thing. And they still have a chance here in the Pac-12, yeah, especially do. with USC being kicked out of it. Yeah. Uh, and we'll get to that one uh, in a little bit too. Yeah. But, you know, just looking at Oregon, Bo Nix uh, and, and Bucky Irving, a duo back there that is just – Impossible to stop. Dude, Bo Nix just doing bo- typical Bo Nix things that we're just used to seeing by now. I mean, what did you say he had for overall passing yardages for this uh, game? Almost 300 yards. He was at 293. <laughs> That's I, crazy. I mean, like I said, Bo Nix, um, or as Blake would say, Bo Heisman. Bo Heisman. Um, I mean, just literally just looking at Oregon outside of the unbelievable fashion that they get for every single week, it's almost like it changes. Oregon is definitely a team that you cannot play around with. Like, However, with this week, like you said, with the with the defense being not like we've normally seen these last couple of weeks, like I know obviously if we say not every team is going to have a perfect game like they do every consistent week, but at the same time, like you allow over four hundred passing yards, that could really be one of those situations to where if you were to lose, that is going to come back and really really bite you later down the road just because you could have been you could have been chilling in the playoffs. Or you could have been thinking, man, we really should have pulled this one out. But still, Oregon ended up pulling out the win. And I'm really excited for what Bo Nix can be doing later this down the road, like getting closer to crunch time. But at the same time, like we've seen so much of Bo Nix. And do you do you think that this is the the normal Bo Nix thing that we're used to seeing? Or do you think there's still a, little, a few hats that haven't been pulled out to where we can see some different type of different types of schemes that we can see from Bo and Bucky. I don't think you're going to see any new schemes, but I think from Bo Nix, what we've seen from him so far, really since going to Oregon is that he's not done fighting. Yeah. And so I think you're going to see, I think you're going to see more impressive. uh, You might see, you might see the best game of his entire career within the next three or four weeks. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. They've got Utah, California. So uh, Utah, uh, Cal Berkeley, uh, USC, Arizona state and Oregon state. Obviously, I'm going to pick the easy one and say USC is the one that he's going to have mm-hmm. the biggest day mm-hmm. uh, and, and the best performance of his lifetime just because there's no defense there. But if you compare to against the defense that he's going against, I could see maybe next week against Utah yeah. uh, or possibly last week against Oregon State, a rival, mm. in-state rival. Show off. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's two big ones there. And then also, if you're able to win all the way up to that game, I'm I'm smelling a big time game from Bo Nix in one of those two games, mm-hmm. whether it be uh, in in I really I would say Utah. I think he's going to have a solid game, mm-hmm. but I'm going to say the biggest game of his career, Oregon and I think State. the easy one is probably USC or possibly Oregon State because this is your last regular season game too. Mm-hmm. As a college football player, it is your last regular season game. Go out with a big mark, uh, and so bang. cook up, big fella. Uh, and and honestly, looking at Bo Nix and talking about him, uh, I, I was thinking earlier today about our Heisman rankings. 
I don't know where to go with Heisman rankings right now because we saw Michael Penix Jr. struggle. Um, do I do I knock him down for that? J.J. McCarthy, he impressed me enough this weekend where I saw some things from him, and I know it's against Michigan State where he's he's finally working his way up into true discussions for me. I think Blake put him in his top five. I don't remember if you did uh, this past week, but J.J. McCarthy is definitely a guy that I just kept out because I don't see the intangibles from him week mm-hmm. in and week out. Yeah. And that's what I need to, to throw him up there. Uh, and then Dylan Gabriel, I don't think he had a bad game. He just didn't have that game that's going to be shocking and throw him up into the number one spot. Yeah. Bo Nix had a good game, yeah, he um, did. but he didn't have that amazing game that's just going to throw you up there. So the Heisman race is definitely another one that I'm I'm excited to talk about that one on, on for our Thursday episode. Oh, that's going to be a fun episode, to say the least. That's going there's well, just so much we can talk about. Really. Well, and, and we might finally start to see a lot more fluctuation in how we rank guys, too. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so Caleb Williams, definitely out, right? Yeah, Caleb Williams is done. 100% out. And, I mean, it, it boils down to attitude. It boils down to the, the things you put on the, the field. And we talked about this the first the first, so a few weeks ago, we uh, it was for right after week six, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. that we put out our first Heisman rankings and and even top twenty five because that's when it really matters when yeah. you're getting about to that halfway point in the year. Mm-hmm. And we looked at Caleb Williams, and I think you and I both put him at number one. Yeah, uh, and it was just because he's got that talent that you can't deny. He may not be putting up the greatest stats of all of the players, but but he's just got those those that that. that playing style that you can't deny and he doesn't have it anymore yeah. uh, he didn't have it the last two weeks he didn't have it uh, this past weekend usc uh, loses a heartbreaker and caleb you williams caleb williams uh, if, if i remember correctly so i didn't see this part um but i i heard that he stepped off to the side of the field and said he wasn't playing anymore and so he just gave up Wow. So you're telling me you're a quitter oh. on top of that? Now, don't, don't quote me on that because I didn't look that up, but I thought I heard something if, of that sort. If that is true, I didn't know. If, I didn't. I didn't know Heisman if you heard winner? that because we, we we weren't able to watch that game. Yeah. Um, I think we were both driving while now. that game was going on. Yeah. And so yeah, just looking at that one, I I looked back on the on everything else through that game, uh, but this was also the first game I think in Caleb's career that he didn't have a passing touchdown. Wow. Uh, he ended up putting up 256 yards passing. That was it. Wow. I believe he did have a rushing touchdown, if I remember right. Um, but Bryson Barnes, uh, let's throw his name out there because he had a really good day. Mm-hmm. Uh, going for two, 235 yards and three touchdowns. He did throw an interception, but this isn't the guy that we're expecting to go out there and throw for 350 yards. yards yeah. So I mean, just looking at what he was able to do and keep this thing in check, uh, and then looking at, at Jackson, their running back, for Utah, uh, he, he had an amazing game, over 100 yards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so looking at him, I think this whole team really stepped up. And uh, I don't remember, I don't remember, I don't know how to say his name, but they've got a wide receiver, uh, Vacky. Vacky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see that too? He, yeah. he had an amazing game. Yeah, he did. He had like uh, 100, 100, 150 yards yeah. almost, 140 like some yards. 135, 140 yeah, something. so I mean, just looking at him, and I think he had uh, two of the touchdowns. Yeah. So Utah just coming out, playing their lights out. Uh, and, and let's talk about Lincoln Riley. Mm-hmm. Because he's gone against Utah three times now. How many of those has he won? Probably none. Zero. Yeah. And and looking at this, I mean, this is the the Pac-12 team in the last three, three or four, four years. years. Uh, at least the team to beat, uh, you know, because they've won two in a row now. And Utah is still a very good team. Cam Rising not expected to play the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. They're sitting at 6-1 and one and quietly looking really sneakily good. Yeah. Because now they go against Utah, this is going to be – Probably the biggest test up to this point. Mm-hmm. And it's this late in the season where you can really make some noise. Definitely. So Utah, Oregon, watch out for that game. We are definitely going to be talking about that one on Saturday, so we'll definitely. talk about it more uh, coming up. But USC, uh, I, I'm going to pull up a, a stat later on because I forgot to write that one down in my notes. But there was a stat that I heard RJ Young uh, say, and I'm pretty sure he was he was comparing – uh, Lincoln Riley to the coach, the previous coach of the USC Trojans, oh. and how they are now both fifteen and oh, how many losses do you have? Fifteen and five, I think. So they're both sitting there in the first two seasons at the same record through the same amount wow. of games. So just not really that good when you look at no. it. And, and when I heard that, that really sh- shocked me because Lincoln Riley stepped out there and brought a, a, a no nobody team, basically, back to prominence. Literally. A, a team that had nothing, nothing and brought them back to prominence. And they just can't close out. And, and the big reason? Defense. Defense. 
they, they just can't get the defense rolling. Uh, and, and Alex Grinch isn't the answer. And I, I, for, for Lincoln Riley's sake, I'm not the Oklahoma fan that cheers against USC. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm cheering on Lincoln Riley. I still got an at- attachment to him that man, like that, that dude gave me some fun, fun Oklahoma football to watch. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm not really mad at him. No, you, you make your be. decisions. And at this point, I'm definitely not mad because I got a defense out on the field now. So sayonara. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but <laughs> looking at Lincoln Riley, I do want to see him succeed. Yeah. And I, I'm cheering. You know, I don't, it, it's almost like, uh, you know, everyone compares it to breakups. If you have a, a, a chick and she breaks up with you and you look at the dude and you're just like, that dude is hideous. <laughs> Doesn't that make you feel bad about yourself? Yeah. I mean, sure, you can you can twist it the other way and be like, she's missing out on me. But me, I'm thinking in my head, man, like that, I, do I look that bad? <laughs> really? And so I don't want him going over to USC and they, they look uglier than Oklahoma. Yeah. And then me be sitting there like, is Oklahoma really that ugly? What, what, why would you? Whatever. So I mean, just looking at it, I, I hope I hope the best for Lincoln Riley. Going to the P- Big Ten too, I'm excited for all the games that we're yeah. going to see out of that. Uh, so I want them to have a good team. So get rid of Alex Grinch. Mm. Um, but I guess, did you have anything more on, on Utah? No, upsetting the Trojans. I mean, if you had a defense, it would be a whole different situation. Like you would see these guys rolling people. Well, and and like we've mentioned. Go after could, Oregon or what Utah or, uh, or uh, really not Utah, but Oregon or Washington. Yeah, Washington. So looking at what they've done, they've put together the high powered offense that they have mm-hmm. with still having a, a tough enough defense yeah. to win you big time games. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, also another thing to look at, like you see a lot of these coaches and everybody talk about like, okay, this defense just gave a really, really good drive. Now let's transfer this over the offensive side. Like you see how many times for, for USC and everything get into that same situation. Then you go and see their defense do what? Nothing really looked like crap, in my opinion. But, I mean, at the same time, we've always talked about this team being a one-sided team, just being all offense, no defense at the same time. But in in this kind of a situation, this is those times where it matters the most. You guys are going to be bumping, but now you really have to just – you have to do whatever it takes to find a flipping defense. I don't care what you got to do, but you have to sincerely find it. Otherwise, I know it's already pretty much said – written and done but you still need to find it and maybe some opportunity can knock and then anything can easily change yeah i mean and then now just looking at at back-to-back losses and i was trying to read through this real quick while you were talking too yeah i'm uh, still trying to listen to you and i don't think i think what i heard i might have misunderstood with with williams coming off but he definitely does throw a fit on the sideline yeah. and it's just not not fun to see and I mean, this he's, is coming from a former heisman winner yeah and he's he's starting to, i mean just before he won the heisman he started doing things of course painting the nails to say things on them that you really shouldn't be writing unsportsman like no. things uh that kind of made me lose a little bit of respect but you yeah, know what childish i can write it off and say it's all part of the game yeah. sure I don't like it, and I don't think most people would like it, and it's hard to defend that kind of behavior. Yeah. Um, but then doing the things that he's doing on the sidelines, throwing I don't know, fits. just yeah, I just you know, and and I I get tearing up and upset about a loss, but I don't know, it's just, it's just the way that you see his body language, uh, it's it's just it's it's not a pleasing sight, and and I'm I'm glad that Oklahoma doesn't have the publicity that he's bringing in right now, yeah, um, because now we're we're hearing about him wanting partial ownership of the NFL team that he's oh, he's be, being drafted by, be quiet. yeah, yeah. So I mean, just not after that performance, no, <laughs> not after the last two or three performances, really, no. I mean, I I know you're the dude around there, and and you, they're relying on you, but uh, you're not all that. No. Um, but let's go over to Iowa, Minnesota, because we talked about this, and I told you I took the under. It was sitting there at 31 and a half, and I thought, surely they can finally hit the over. It keeps on going down for Iowa. <laughs> it like, never nah, goes up. It just keeps I'm, going down. I'm hitting that under. Yeah. I'm hitting that under, and what happens? They hit, they hit the under. The oh. They hit the under. Wow. 10 to, 10 to 12, 22 points total. But you know what? Iowa... I feel for you as much fun as we like to poke at Iowa because we're right here on the border. Mm -hmm. We hear it from Nebraska and Iowa and I'm leaning on the Nebraska side because that's where my family's at. And I get that, but I don't know if you're able to catch this. Uh, And I I meant to send the highlight to make sure that the whole group saw it before we talked about it, but I didn't realize how Iowa lost because we looked at at one point and it was 16 to 12 and they were winning. Yeah. And so we thought they won because it was at the end of the game. Yeah. And I didn't click back over to watch that game because we found out about the Washington game started going over watching yeah. that one. Oops. <laughs> Come to find out, 
for those who didn't watch, again, I wanted to pull up the, the clip for everyone to, to watch too because I want to hear everybody's thoughts. So comment down below. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously too, I'm going to stop everybody. If you're watching right now on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. It's a great way to help us out over on YouTube. It gets us pushed up in the charts and beats the algorithms. So mm -hmm. help us out there. But if you didn't get to watch it, please go back and watch how that Iowa game ended because I'm going to be honest with you. Iowa won that game. 100%. They got a field goal, or sorry, they got a, a punt return, Yeah, returned it to the house, all right? And, and in the middle of the play, if you watch what's going on in the middle of the play, mm -hmm. we have Iowa come up, the ball bounces on the ground, the punt returner picks up the ball, he takes off running, you watch all the blocks, clean blocks all the way down, touchdown. Everyone's celebrating, nothing's going on, no whistles to try to stop the play during it, before it all broke to be crazy but celebrations are going the the fans are going crazy you look at pj fleck on the on the sideline and he's just over there oh, man mm. you know he doesn't think of anything going on um, my, my dad and i were talking about this too he's the one that brought that up to me because i just thought i'm confused on how iowa lost and i didn't end up seeing that part for some reason yeah um and, you know because i was watching highlights on a lot of these games trying to catch up this weekend since we yeah. were so busy driving and all that kind yeah. of stuff so they they come back to review it, and even the commentators very confused because no whistles, no yeah. no reactions from either side. Even Kirk Ferentz over there just kind of like a typical going on? Kirk Ferentz look, and and even even PJ Fleck looking up at the the sidelines like or up at the the big the big screen and scores, yeah, up at the big screen and thinking, okay, I'm not really sure. They didn't announce what they're going to review. Yeah, they come out on the field and they said the punt return is bring bought, being brought back to where it was initially touched because he called a fair catch. For those who don't know, a fair catch is above your head. All right, it is not down here. If you're doing this, that's not a fair catch for anyone who doesn't understand the, the that aspect of football. And I'm not saying that to belittle anyone because I get it. Not not everyone's played football, and you're a fan. Yeah, you do that. We always called Peter, Peter, mm -hmm. Peter, Peter, Peter. Yeah. I don't know what the if, if everyone called that, but yeah. Peter, Peter, Peter. Yeah. And you, you you shove out your hands too in case they can't hear you mm -hmm. because it means like get away. Yeah, just what you see what you see him way. doing is running and he's pointing towards the ball and and doing this you know kind of that, that Peter mm -hmm. and so he's pointing as he's as he's yelling Peter mm -hmm. exactly what he should do in that situation because it's about to come it's coming low it's hitting yeah. the ground he picks it up and runs it was way down by his waist so Iowa doesn't get that one they end up having some bad coaching decisions really because when you look at the situation they're in in the fourth quarter I don't care where you're at on the field with about about two minutes left of the game, a little less than that, you've got to go for it on fourth down and, and, and get down there for a field goal at this point Something. because you're down by two uh, and rely on your defense uh, at, at all costs. Mm -hmm. So uh, just ultimately, Iowa, I'm sorry because now that may have blew your chance at the Big Ten Championship win in the West because mm -hmm. this game this game would have secured the West. Yeah, form. it would have locked it up. So so that 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 blows your 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 chance for the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. And if you could have pulled off some crazy upset in the Big Ten championship game with one loss, you're going to the, the to the, the playoffs, mm -hmm. most likely. Yeah. And so, I mean, that that just, that blows. Uh, and, and I hate to see that for any team, man. I know. Uh, you know, and, and and you can't blame refing on, on everything, but stuff like that, that's mm -hmm. too much. You went back to review and still overturned it to something bogus. And and even even the dudes on, on the commentary and everything were just so shocked at what was just now happening. Yeah. Uh, and I... I I want to hear somebody explain to me yeah. how this down here is a fair catch. Please explain. I don't care what the motion was. I don't care any of that. A fair catch is at least above your shoulder. At least. So, I mean, that's just looking at it, I think that was bogus. He didn't think he felt called a fair catch. No. The players on the on the on either sideline didn't think so. It was – that's disgusting. No, I mean, losing a game like that would drive me absolutely nuts. And it would drive anybody nuts. I know you look at any Iowa fan. I mean, they've been – this is the best that Iowa's been compared to last year. When I mean, obviously, nobody got a new quarterback compared to Peters last year. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you do something like that, and it just completely blows Iowa out of proportion. And like you said, it costs them this lock-in shot. Yeah, the, the whole season. It's The whole season is, is – if I probably possibly ruined done. Yeah. Uh, at, the, at the very least, you're not getting into the playoffs as a two loss team, even if you do upset an undefeated Michigan or Ohio State in the in the Big Ten Big Championship Jones, game. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, if I was that if I, if I was that ref that made the, that call, 
I'd really be looking over my shoulders. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that one was disgusting. Yeah. Uh, they end up winning, or they end up losing to Minnesota, twelve to ten. I feel like something needs to be done. Yeah. This is again, why do we come back to referees no. making bad decisions? They need to be on the stand and explain what they called and and how they called it, how they saw it. Uh, and pay. they need to be, yeah, they need to be fined. They need to be fired and never allowed to coach. After that, mm. you should not be able to no. to, to referee and you officiate be in the stands watching ever. Never again. No. Um, but Jeremy, uh, do we have some some words from our friends over at Built Bar? I mean, I mean, I am a little bit hungry, but Built Bar. I tell you what, guys, Built Bar is definitely a thing that I use a lot. And then Josh got me hooked onto him. Like at first, I was kind of skeptical. Like, what's Built Bar? Then he kind of explained to me. But I'm gonna explain it to you guys a little bit if you've never heard of Built Bar. Built Bars aren't your typical protein bars. They're really nutritious, packed with protein, and guess what? They taste phenomenal. I tell you what. Get some birthday cake. He'll thank me later. <laughs> um, I tell you what, like calling it magic, like they got a range of, like I said, enticing flavors like um, salted caramel, coconut, cookies and cream. Birthday cake still the best. Um, I tell you what, but it's also coated in 100% real chalk. Compared to you, you get some of those bars that tell you it's coated in 100%. It's really not coated 100%. Like Josh, you and I have had plenty of those, and we're really excited for it. But at the same time, we take that first bite, we usually toss it in the trash. But not, not Bill Bars. No, though. no, 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 no. Built Bar, that's the next level. It's Built Bar's a game changer, guys. And I tell you what, like whether you're working out, hiking, doing what we do, podcasting, or even like even out hunting or just simply out working, I tell you what, you're not going to be disappointed in a Built Bar. And for all you loyal fans and listeners who have stuck around with us and heard us talk about Built Bar numerous times, you go to the website, it's go to built.com and use the code RISING2 for 10% off your order, guys. And I tell you what, like I say with a lot of things, like for a lot of our sponsors, but until you actually get to physically use these products and you actually see how truly unbelievable that they are, I'm going to stick to my word. Just like I say with Big Frig and so many of our other sponsors, you will not be disappointed. So, guys, go over it. to built.com and use Rising2, that is R I S I N G T O, for 10% off. 10% off an amazing product. And you're right, too. I mean, you, you, you eat pilt bars. Uh, and that's something, too, I, I keep on forgetting. Yeah. We still haven't tried the, uh, the the protein powder that they've got. Yeah. Um, they've got all kinds of new stuff. Every time I go to built.com, I go on there something to order. Different's always there. I go on there to order the same things. Mm-hmm. And then I realize there's something new that, man, I should have ordered that. I need it's to order that next to time. That rub when it it's is. So good. It is. But, and, and you're right, birthday cake is very good. Mm. And it's something, too. So I don't like sweets anymore because yeah. of Built Bar. Built Bar got me off of sweets. I feel a lot healthier. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm able to get better sleep from it. I'm able mm-hmm. to... I, I, I genuinely have more more energy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this this studio didn't build itself. No. Uh, you know, I put a lot of hard work into it. And We both went through at least like three or four <laughs> Built Bars just to get the studio going. Jer- Jeremy saw what this was before. He, he, he saw what he left it as, and that was a lot of work in and of itself whenever yeah. you left. Yeah. But then, like, you remember what the floors were like and everything. Yeah. So it just... Man, it was you know stuff like that, and then on top of that, I, I work a lot of hours, and and I'm I'm in a supervisor position where I'm constantly needing energy. I, I rely on Built Bars a lot, uh, and they've they've helped out a lot. He's being got able a to, box of Built Bars in his truck to keep him awake most of the time. Most yeah. of the time, I do, and they've also got little mini ones too. So if you don't those want a full best. one, yeah, I love those. Those uh, are the best, and they're nice to share with people mm-hmm. too because you're sharing and caring, and and you don't really feel like you're losing a whole lot on it. So built.com, B-U-I-L-T.com, rising two for 10% off. Mm-hmm. But man, let's get to one more game. What do we got? Um, first off, I, I guess I'll, I'll say two more games. Uh, I, I don't have much to say on this game other than hats off to Missouri. They're sitting at 7-1. I want to give Woo! them a round of applause because Missouri is looking really good. They are. And Missouri has a chance to be a very good team in the SEC. Mm-hmm. And they've got a bright future ahead of them if they keep on going on this road. They yeah. beat South Carolina 34-12 to in a game that a lot of people were picking against them. So I'm just going to briefly mention them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you have anything to touch on, on for Missouri going 7-1? No. I mean, hats off to you guys. Keep rolling. Put, keep, don't let off the gas pedal. You guys keep this momentum going. You'll go far. Yeah, yeah I, just, I love seeing that from Missouri. Uh, and, and seeing what they were able to do. But let's go to the upset of the week. Mm. And that was Virginia topping off North Carolina 
when I saw this, there was just no way that this just now happened. No. And, you know, something that, that you guys might remember me saying, and I've been getting a lot of flack. We've had a lot of comments <laughs> on the shorts uh, that we put out there, that, that we had a short with me saying it uh, on, on YouTube and a TikTok video and all this kind of stuff where I've been seeing comments roll in left and right. And even even buddies of mine texting me like, you just said Drake May has been booty cheeks? Yeah, I said that, and, and I'm, I'm going to stand by it. There's a reason why he's not in the top 10 Heisman watch for me. He's a reason why he's not in the top 15 Heisman watch for me because he doesn't look good this year. I can already hear so many comments rolling on. And, and, and I'm, I'm saying that he's booty cheeks in the sense that I don't want him on my team this year. You want to give me the excuse that he didn't have his top wide receiver. What did he do in this, this game? Because the dude still only went 50% and threw an interception. Lost to a Virginia team who is not good. Mm. One win on the season before this. Yep. I, I just, I didn't think, I don't think Drake May looks good this year. He's been making very bad decisions. Mm. I don't see any growth from him. It's not to say that he couldn't, honestly, he needs to come back for another year because this is not how he goes out of college no. football. You this can't go out on this. I, go I don't think Drake May looks good this year. No. I don't, and I'm going to stand by that until he proves himself to be better than he is. I think he's thrown uh, you know, five interceptions on the season now. Uh, at least four. Let me look this up real quick. I want to say he's thrown at least at four. Five, five interceptions on 14 touchdowns. That okay. is not good. That is no. not good football. No. You're sitting at a 77.3 QBR right now, dude. Mm. I don't think that's good. Now, that's that's criticism to grow upon. Yeah. That's criticism to grow upon. So I like Drake May. And coming into it, he was one of my Heisman favorites, if not like the top two, because it was between him and Caleb Williams. Who's going to edge out? And North Carolina looked sneaky good. And I just said he hasn't been looked good, but yeah. he needs to have a big game. He had a big game, had a big win, comes out against Virginia, and he has a bad game and loses again. I, I don't I don't want to hear excuses for the dude. Yeah. He doesn't look good this year. No, I mean... I was in the same boat. I thought he was going to be at least a top three Heisman contender. Um, um, he looked like he jumped off of a trampoline and into a pool and hasn't gotten out of the pool yet. I mean, Drake May, this was nothing like what we expected. Like, first couple of weeks, I'm like, okay, it's it's the beginning of the season. Like, it's, it's still the first, like, getting to know everything, but... Ever since then, it just hasn't looked. It just hasn't looked like normal football that we'll be seeing. So I, I, I don't know what you got to do to. I don't know if you got to get a Bill Bar subscription to get get more energy to play better, or if you need to drink something different other than coffee and protein powder in the morning. But I mean, sincerely, like Drake, the, try out Bill Bars. Maybe Bill it. Bars will do the trick for you. Get birthday cake. Get birthday cake built bars. You heard it from Jeremy himself. Uh, You'll thank me later. Yeah, I mean, just looking at that one. Uh, big shout out. Blake, Blake's not on the show. Auburn only losing by seven mm. to Ole Miss. A really good game. And I'm liking what I'm seeing down at Auburn. I, I think oh, yeah. this is enough to just say, throw this season out the window. Don't don't expect too much from this. And you shouldn't have. I still hope they can reach that six mark. You, you need three more wins. It's going to be tough. Mm. There's some, some that you're going to need to squeeze out of there. But... Uh, Auburn, and then I, I guess another one to bring back is uh, bring up too is, is Tennessee, Tennessee, Alabama, uh, Alabama coming out and scoring twenty seven in the second hmm. half, twenty seven to zero in the second half. We thought, to come out and win this game thirty four to twenty. We thought this game was over. Yeah, like we we're thinking twenty to nothing, and all of a sudden Alabama finds the gas pedal well, and doesn't let it, off. It was at the point with twenty to seven. I'm thinking, all right, you got a thirteen point lead. You don't want to get comfortable with that, but I don't no. know how Alabama comes back when they just haven't looked like Alabama. No. And Nick Saban, dude, he just knows how to get get a fire underneath his guys. They come out and win the second half. Like I said, 27. Let me double-check that real quick. Yeah. Uh, 17 and 10. That is 27 in the second half to, let's see, 0 plus 0. Oh, yeah, 0. <laughs> Wait, let's multiply it. Zero times. Nope, that's still 0. Oh. Tennessee, man, you got to get your poop in a group because you do not look like the same Tennessee from last year. Uh, so another shocker. Uh, good job to Alabama, too. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Alabama winning games like this makes me more impressed with them than if they were just to come out and barely win, uh, leading the game by six points the whole whole game through and end up pulling away a little bit at the end. Yeah. Finding a way to fight through that adversity, I think that's a big, big time thing for it's any huge. any team. And being able to do it and come out and win by double digits after that. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, Josh. It was in Tennessee too, correct? Uh, in Alabama it was this in time. Alabama. Yeah. Last okay. year was in in Tennessee. Okay. This this one so, was down in Tuscaloosa. Okay. But I mean, still thinking about that. You let an Al don't get me wrong. It's still Alabama. Like it's not the Alabama we've we're used to seeing. But still, you let Alabama put up 27 unanswered points, and you still have that goose egg on the board for the other team. You, I don't know if they heard me sing or if 
I don't know what the heck they were doing if they were sleeping or, but I mean, you, like I said, this is one of those situations you cannot let anything get comfortable and do not let off the gas pedal. Cause if you do like this persistence, you just got beat and you're going to look at this later down the road and think we should have won that game and we shouldn't have let off the gas pedal, but look at you now. And you got, instead of a nice big dub, you got a nice big L on that board. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know. Alabama's just looking slightly scarier. Mm Mm-hmm. The each more week. that they win each week, yeah, each week. I mean, it's 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 really been mm-hmm. really fun to watch how they've turned things around too, because they they didn't look good. Oh. They lost to Texas, and the way they lost to Texas at home, that one kind of made everybody feel, man, it just oh. doesn't look good. I wasn't on the board where I was saying I was ready to give up on them, but it still didn't. And each week, it just didn't look like they had it. Mm-hmm. They barely pull off against Arkansas again, another one that they fought back yeah. to come back and, and win that game. Yeah. And so you just see the way that they're winning. Hey. Let's let's stop and get it together and, and come on win. And Tennessee fans, can we stop with the with with, with the penalties? You know, the one thing that that annoys me with any fan base is taking a a, a still frame photo of a dude holding <laughs> and putting it together. And that they they had I saw a post where it was a Tennessee fan posting this, and it was four different times where holding. Where's the holding? We don't call holding on Alabama. Holding happens on every play, mm. and you pulling out a still frame photo doesn't resolve anything no. because that's happening in real time, and that penalty has to be thrown out in real time. So g- give up with with trying to blame the refs when you just didn't win the game. Yeah. Uh, so I just looking at Tennessee, I don't think they they had a great game. Uh, Joe Milton, I do think had one of the best games I've seen that out of his true. career, that is true. Um, and and it's it's sad to say that because he had two hundred seventy yards. And two touchdowns, um, and it was all in the first half, really, because the second half just wasn't there. Oh. Um, so it just it, it, you've got to find a way to figure it out, and I think they did a really good job of utilizing uh, utilizing Jalen Milrow uh, for Alabama too. So uh, good job, Alabama! Roll Tide! Uh, just keep on rolling because I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Alabama right now. Yeah. They're 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 fighting back in a different way that makes me respect them a lot more mm-hmm. because every year it's just Alabama punching people and just knocking them down and you can't do anything to beat them this year they look beatable and they're still winning games and so i can appreciate what alabama's doing uh and and i i see it i see a race for the sec championship game on the on hands right now alabama gets georgia today who are you taking georgia i'm probably taking georgia right now too um but that's going to be a really fun one the kitchen's the kitchen smell is still pretty good, in my opinion, for for Georgia to pull a three. But anything's possible. You can you can say Georgia's going to come out and beat them by fifty, and then all of a sudden Alabama beats them by fourteen. So yeah, you well, you, you I, can't predict anything. I think that's going to be a really fun fun one to look forward to. But mm-hmm. let's go ahead and jump over to our college football power rankings. This is now week nine that we are in. So this is through week eight. Mm-hmm. I don't have Blake's yet, so you guys are going to have to go and follow us on social media. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, and we're also on TikTok, but uh, you're going to be able to find these power rankings that we've got, college football power rankings for week nine. Mm -hmm. We've got these out here. Jeremy Jeremy and I are going to give you our uh, top 10 uh, for our rankings, and I'm going to say this. I do... I do think that this is probably the best AP top 10 yeah. that I've seen. Cause I looked at theirs kind of compare and see what I didn't like. Yeah. And then I went outside the top 10 and started looking. And I do want to throw an honorable mention. That's not going to make it in the top 10 unless they do something crazy, but air force. Yeah. Seven, seven and Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'll give you credit for that. You had time to f- do a flyover in Norman and still make it to your game and win and the game. Dub. So, I mean, good job. I, I, I like that. I like seeing air force at seven and Oh, that's, that's yeah. fun. Hey, Keep by the way, going. air force, you owe me a new pair of underwear <laughs> because he did go and check and he found out what had happened. But Jeremy, yeah. uh, give us your top 10. And like I said, if you want to see and compare with Blake's top 10 as well, you're going to have to go over and follow us on social media mm-hmm. to see what his is. But you're going to hear Jeremy's and I's. Uh, so go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah. My top 10 going off number 10, my first one. They didn't pull off the win against Ohio State, but I'm still going to give them my top 10. That's Penn State. I know, you like we've talked about, you look against these guys and you look at going against Ohio State, you got to bring every physical game. I've said that week after week. But, I mean, you, you look at these two teams and we all, 
all knew it was going to be a dog fight, to say the least. Um, obviously, with the outcome, or Ohio State coming out with a win. But I'm still going to have Penn State at my top 10, and I'm going to have them at number 10. But number nine, I'm going to have the University of Alabama. Nice. And l- looking at these guys, like we, like we just talked about, each week they're just getting better and better and better. And, I mean, you can't really – like you said, we're used to seeing Alabama to where they're all of a sudden just absolutely kicking the snot out of the people. And now we can come into a week and say, we can beat these guys, but we still have to put up a heck of a fight. So I'm still having Alabama in my top 10. I have them bumped up to my number nine because before I didn't even have them in my top 10 with how they were playing. But looking at number eight is Texas. And looking at these guys, like I said, you you can either get messed with the horns or you're going to get the lucky draw of the horn. And between Quentin Ewers, like I said, with having him going out for an injury, like we've talked about, thoughts and prayers to him over speedy recovery, and we never like to see anybody or even wish upon someone getting hurt. If, you th- if you're if you happy with yourself wishing someone getting hurt, shame on you. I'm sorry, but to me, Josh and Blake, that's not right by any means necessary. So going into number seven, I have Oregon for my number seven. Then looking at them for obviously, like we just said, Bo Nicks doing typical Bo Nicks things, and we're getting to that point to where we're we're possibly going to see him play his best week or even whatever the situation is. So I think his I think his sight on the horizon is definitely getting bigger and bigger. So looking at this upcoming schedule for what's real, what's left, it's definitely going to be a fun one. But going to my number six. We just went and saw him, and I have Oklahoma at my number six. And I wanted to put him up a little bit higher, but looking at these other teams, like the top three, it's locked. Really, the top six, top five, six yeah, teams top right now, I locked. think it's just, it, it, yeah, you're going to have to either lose or have a win that yeah. really looked bad. And the fact that, uh, you know, knowing who you've got up there, I'm sure uh, Washington didn't really, they, they won. So, yeah. I mean, and, and they had a... It, Oklahoma had a bad game too. So how do you reverse that? Exactly, I, I, I mean, agree with that decision. It was really Cause, hard because you had you had Oklahoma at six last week and then Washington at five. So yeah. you don't really bump one no. down because they both had a very similar, not impressive game, but you both walked away with a victory. Exactly. Then, like obviously for number five, like we just said, Washington. But I mean, getting the getting the stamina just to come back and you can thank your defense for it but i mean still having not as great of a game what we used to see possibly i'm going to say it maybe the worst game we've seen michael Penix junior maybe play this year but i mean it's going to happen everyone's not going to be perfect so if you if you're going to say a quarterback's going to play perfect every game i'm going to look at you and call you call you a bull face liar but going to my number 4 Florida State, obviously Jordan Travis and everything for what we've all seen. It's just been lights out for Florida State's performance. So looking at everybody and just even going into the top three, we can all probably, I guarantee we're all probably going to have the top. Um, maybe not. Blake might throw a curve monkey wrench in there. But number three, Ohio State. Obviously, Ohio State, we can talk so much about Marvin Harrison Jr. We can just go on and on and on. But you guys have probably heard enough of it, so I'm sorry. But we're going to keep being repetitive. So, Sorry. Um, Ohio State just coming in week in, week out, just playing dominant, strong, just playing nose good football. Then number two, go blue, Michigan. Then, the team up north. Yeah, the that team that loves the color blue, and they always know how to – their fan base is just unbelievable, just always know how to support a good Michigan team. Then obviously number one, I still – I know I'm smelling something. I know your wife isn't cooking, but I'm smelling something to cooking like a three-peat for Georgia. So – Looking at this, like you obviously said, the top six, it's just really so hard to branch out and just flip-flop a team here and there. But that's my top ten for college football. Josh, what about you? What do you have for your top ten? I I think the top tens are narrowing down because I think you and I had all the same teams in the top ten. A little different order when it comes down to the bottom. Uh, So my number ten, I had Penn State. Uh, Penn State, if it wasn't for UNC losing, they Mm might have dropped out of the top ten only because – they, they lost out of the yeah. top 10 teams. Nobody else lost uh, this past weekend. And so that's, that's what I'm basing week to week off of. Yeah. 
Uh, you just now had a loss. You're going to drop down to number 10. I think I had them at number 7 before, if I remember right. So, uh, I'll yeah, have to look back. But 7 or 8. More yeah, two. so uh, looking at, at Penn State, I, I I still think you're a top 10 team. And mm, like I said, you, you still have – it's not it's not in your hands anymore, but you still have a chance to go up and win the Big Ten. Uh, so if you can win the Big Ten, I think you're in the top four. Yeah. And just because of the way things are going to line out, lay out. Because I think you're going to have Oklahoma – uh, or Texas drop out of there, either beating each other or something else happens throughout the season. Who knows? Something. Uh, and then you're going to have a Georgia, Alabama. I think Alabama doesn't have anything left uh, to, to give. So if they have another loss, that's going to shape things up there. There's a lot of that up in the top 10. But number nine, I'm going to put Oregon. Uh, I know you had a, a lo- bad loss. It just it sucked to see that. Uh, it was against the good teams. I, I guess it was yeah. a good loss. I should say that's not a bad loss. It just sucks that's to just lose the way that you lost. Um, but Oregon up there at number nine, still a lot of things that, that could happen for Oregon too. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited to see what they could do. Yeah. And then number eight, I bumped Alabama all the way up to number eight because Ooh. they looked really good in the way that they're they're playing right now and the way that they battle through adversity. I don't think Alabama is going to keep on battling through adversity for wins at the end of the season. If they play in the SEC championship game, they're going to either keep it close and win by pulling out in the fourth quarter or they're just going to simply – play smash mouth Alabama roll tide kind of football and they're going to keep on winning so I've got mm-hmm. them at number eight number seven I have the horns down uh big time big time coming out just win uh good job Texas I, I really do so from from the fan aspect of football I want to see Texas win out mm-hmm. and I want to see an Oklahoma Texas rematch big 12 championship game for one that's so sweet that we're both leaving the conference yeah. and we're going to leave it with a bad taste in their mouth yeah. and a great taste in ours so even if even if you do lose Texas which is probably going to happen um it, it's it's going to be sweet so I'm rooting for Texas up up to that point uh, I'm I'm the other side of me from being an Oklahoma Once fan still up, but the, still the up. other side of me as a fan I really don't want to see Texas again because I don't want to have to play them again they are a tough team they're a very good team they are. still in still in the chance still in the running number six Oklahoma just above uh, Texas and the way that I did those three too uh, I know Texas and Alabama very similar teams uh, Texas beat Alabama so they jump above them and Oklahoma undefeated and they beat Texas so right above them I like the way that, that those three line up mm-hmm. uh, on, on the rankings there and you even have a very similar just Oregon in between them yeah but number five Washington like we we were saying with you you can't really bump washington down because they played no. bad because oklahoma and texas both play bad too they didn't play their their, their greatest games so i'm going to keep washington up there florida state battling through adversity again showing that, that you're going to pull out the win no matter what it takes mm-hmm. uh, and i do think it shows quite a few weaknesses in the last few games even if you back up to week three or four i think week week four maybe it was four, yeah. uh whenever they played boston college yeah I think uh, really and, and so some weaknesses being shown throughout the season mm-hmm. but it's being able to learn from those weaknesses and from those mistakes through the wins, and that's exactly what you saw against Duke and a very good Duke team. So yeah. number four, I've got Florida State. Number three, same as you, I've got Ohio State. The only man I wanted to bump Ohio State above Michigan th- this week because they really did impress me, yeah. mainly that defensive play. Uh, and it, Ohio State, all it takes is Michigan to have not as good of a of a game as you, and you bump above them because I'm very impressed by Ohio State. Anyone knows who knows me personally knows that that's genuine. I'm very impressed with Ohio State right now. And if you keep on playing the way that you've been playing, I've got Ohio State as my favorite right now. Mm-hmm. Currently, I've got them as my favorite, but Michigan had such a good game. I can't dock them. They won 63-0, so they're at number two. Yeah. And Georgia, I'm still not going to dock them until they lose. So no. pretty much the top three spots I feel like are locked in. Number four, five, and six could ju- adjust around if one were to have a bad game and the other had a good game. Yeah. But they really all three had not a great game and were able to pull out and win. Yeah. So uh, just looking at those three, it was really, really fun to see how that lined up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I pretty much kept that top six the same, and everybody else uh, kind of got to, I guess, the top five, and then the rest of them kind of got to bump above uh, Penn State and Oregon, jumping back up in the top ten for me. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun to, to see the movements there. Like yeah. I said, I'll have Blake's top ten uh, in on the social media. I'll make sure to post the graphic. I've even got it ready to go other than Blake's. I've just got to adjust his around because uh, I know for a fact he's going to have to adjust because oh, UNC can't stay in the top ten after no. that loss. Uh, you've got to drop down to like number 14, 15. I'm just thinking close to 20. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're pushing him down a lot further than I would, but I don't I don't hate it. Uh, looking at, at this though, guys, I mean, we've still got a lot of college football to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to try to hop on. Maybe we'll do, we've, we've been able to push, push out some extra episodes here and there. We've been lacking here and there too. So maybe we're able to push out some extra episodes, yeah. but you know where to find us if, if we're 
on schedule and on time with everything. We're going to release on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8.30 a.m. is usually when everything premieres uh, for our national sports. We usually are always going to catch up on our college football or NFL. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've got some Monday night football to catch catch right now, so we're going to have to go and see what's going on there. Uh, But then you can always join us on Saturdays at uh, 8.30 a.m. So a Saturday morning, 8.30 a.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Catch us for our live show where we're going to preview our top five matchups and also have fun and bet with you guys. Guys. Uh, and so make sure to join in and we want to see more of a live audience on those too because uh, it's it's being frustrating um, ending the ending the show and then seeing everybody hop on to watch we want you guys to wake up get ready get pumped up and rise up in the morning with us and watch it uh, you know join us because we want to have a little bit of a discussion with you as our fan base we'll so one thing one thing that we haven't been able to have as much of uh, but I do want to pull up I guess because Jeremy actually reminded me of this uh, I'm gonna pull up really quick uh, if I can get it to pull up for me but uh let's let's go and i'm going to pull up so what you guys can do if you're listening on an apple podcast spotify uh you can always give us a five star review but we we love to see the reviews not just the rating we love to see the reviews and i i I had a chance to go back and look i saw we had some new ones and i never really went back through and and actually read them Uh, and so i wanted to take a little bit of an appreciation moment and read some of these reviews for you guys and and just a shout out to you guys uh and and we'll keep on doing this as as we see reviews mm-hmm. rolling in because we've got a lot of them we and I, we haven't t- touched on any of them sure. uh, and so the first one that it says un- uh, titled unraveling the thrills on this podcast uh, and this is from viola huffman uh, she says this podcast is like having a sports anal anal sorry analyst uh analysis man i don't know why i'm you my, need me to read my, i'm getting i'm starting to get sick guys so my brain is just need these? dead uh so it's anyways sports analysis dream in my pocket the host's ex- expertise and deep understanding of the games they cover are impressive they provide thoughtful insights and break down complex plays in a way that even non-athletes can appreciate whether it's football basketball soccer or any other sport they manage to keep the content fresh and engaging i look forward to each new episode and can't recommend this podcast enough to fellow sports enthusiasts keep up the fantastic work team viola i really appreciate that one that one meant a lot to me that was one of the top ones that i loved Uh, and then we've also got christy uh, which i didn't realize we've had so many women listening to our stuff i just i just was assuming that we had men um, because usually w- women don't like to hear what I have to say, but it's, it's, that's awesome. That's I awesome. Maybe to hear. thinking it was because Blake brought his baby on the show. That yeah. Be, maybe, maybe know, is, is, no. is, is little baby we Levi love hearing from both you guys is, is baby ladies. Levi. Why we're drawing in more of a ladies audience. We like that too. That's a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm, hired. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that oh, yeah. uh, and, and to realize hearts, that. Everybody. So Christy, uh, maybe this is Christy and Mike, or maybe it's Mike Christy. Um, but it says Christy J. Mike. So I'm not really sure. Maybe this one isn't a woman, but whoever this is, uh, Christy J. Mike, Sports Stories Unleashed. Being a casual sports fan, I was hesitant about diving into a new sports podcast, but this one changed my perspective completely. The hosts strike a perfect balance between catering to hardcore uh, hardcore fans and engaging newcomers like me. I love how they explain the uh, and intricacies of each sport without making it overwhelming. Their enthusiasm is contagious, and I find myself getting more invested in the games they discuss. It's a fantastic way to stay in the loop without spending hours watching every match. Highly recommend th- for sports lovers uh, of all levels. So, again, thank you because that one, uh, again, I, that's that's what we shoot for. We shoot for being able to get you guys engaged with the sports we're talking about. It means and more than you know. We do have uh, more of a... a a deep dive into football and, and football especially. And uh, for Jeremy, a lot for more hockey. hockey. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely up there with hockey, but I've been out of it for an, enough where I'm not as, as deep as he is. And then uh, Blake with baseball. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we have, we, we don't just watch sports. We all are the kind of guys that watch sports and love them so much that we analyze what's going on in them. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do with this show. Yeah. Uh, let's read one more. It says, this is from David, uh, David Roper. It says, I, uh, the definite, the definitive sports podcast. I can't get enough of this podcast. The host's passion for sports is infectious, and their chemistry makes it feel like you're a part of the sports loving community. They, they dive deep into game strategies, player stats, and even historical moments, making every episode both entertaining and informative. As one who loves multiple sports, I appreciate the variety this podcast offers. It's the perfect companion during my daily commute or gym session. Keep up the great work, and I'll keep cheering you on. Uh, David, we're cheering you on and all of your, uh, you know, if you're, if you're listening right now in your gym uh, sessions or your commute, uh, you're, you're probably, rep. if you're commuting to work, you got this, man. It's tough to go into work every day, but you got this. And if you're on the treadmill listening right now, 
keep on running, keep on going, keep on working out, whatever you're doing, lifting weights, keep on going, man. Get you know, we, PR. we really do. We really, really appreciate that. Uh, and we're going to keep on doing this. We're going to keep on going through because there is tons of reviews and I didn't realize how many we've had uh, and, and so many of them. And I expected to go on there and just see very, very bland and vague uh, reviews, but we're seeing very deep and well thought of and, and, and sincere reviews like that. That means a lot to me mm-hmm. um, because I started this with my brother in his basement as a little hobby and it's turned into something that we want to keep on pushing to grow. So we want this kind of interaction from you guys. Mm-hmm. So please go on there, leave us a review. You can go over to uh, rising2.com and click leave a review at the top of the page. You should be able to see reviews and leave your own review uh, on there. If you we'll don't have, if you really don't have good. Apple Podcasts or Spotify, uh, do it that way. Go over to our website and leave us a review. Uh, you can also follow us on social media, comment on our posts, comment on YouTube, uh, whatever the case may be. Join us live. That's the best way for us to interact uh, interact with you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and eventually we want to work into bigger things than just live chat uh so guys we thank you all so much for all of your love for your support again leave us that review get a uh, subscribe like us uh go follow us on social media all that kind of stuff guys we thank you so much and until next time